Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about Saturn's moon Titan. Specifically, we'll be talking about whether life might be present on Titan, so what kind of conditions are present on Titan and within Titan's interior, and what the key for life on Titan might be. So let's get started. So here's a general outline of what we'll talk about. We'll first go over whether Titan is habitable for life as we know it, and maybe something called weird life, and then Titan's atmosphere, Titan's ocean, and cycling of life essential material, which brings us to the key for life on Titan within that category, and then how cycling might occur through tectonics, cryovolcanism, or impacts, and meteorite material. And so we'll go over all of this in today's video, and we will start with is Titan habitable? So we had this same slide for the first Europa video. I'll link it up here if you want to check out that video. But for Titan, the same three essentials for life as we know it that are present on Earth and Europa apply. And these are water, the chinops elements, or carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, and energy. And we'll get more into the caveats of whether there's enough energy on Titan for life later. But these three things make up the essentials for life as we know it, and they are present on Titan. So the short answer is yes, Titan is habitable, but it's not only habitable for life as we know it, aka water-based life, but it might also be habitable for life as we don't know it, or weird life per se. And this life might be present on the surface of Europa as opposed to within its interior, which we'll get into the differences between where life as we know it might be and where weird life might be on Titan in a few slides. But it's just a really cool prospect that Titan might contain weird life at its surface. And this is because of its carbon-based or methane-based chemistry at its surface rather than water-based. So that brings us to what are the conditions on Titan. So Titan has an icy crust just like Europa does, and it also has an underlying liquid ocean, which we'll get into the evidence for later in the video, but there are also lakes on Titan's surface. And you might be thinking, well, no duh, there's probably plenty of life at Titan's surface. But these are not liquid water lakes. These are liquid methane lakes. And not only does the methane exist on Titan's surface as liquid, but it also exists as solid and gas. So the same way that Earth cycles liquid water, solid ice, and water vapor, Titan cycles liquid methane, solid methane ice, and methane gas. Yeah, it has clouds of methane vapor, and it rains methane. It has all the weather like Earth has, but everything's methane. It's so weird. And so that's why we think it might host weird life or non-water-based life at its surface. But as as we can see in the figure to the right, it also has this underlying liquid ocean that is liquid water rather than methane. So we'll talk about maybe life as we know it or water-based life in that liquid ocean a little bit later. But first, let's discuss a little bit about the atmosphere on Titan because you might be thinking, well, it rains methane and has clouds and all this. Well, then it must have an atmosphere. And you're right, it does. It has a really thick atmosphere, actually. It's about 1.5 times as thick as Earth's atmosphere. And it's composed of about 95% nitrogen and about 5% methane. And just for context, Earth's atmosphere is composed of about 80% nitrogen and about 20% oxygen, as well as some other trace gases. But why is Titan's atmosphere so thick? Because it really actually shouldn't be. All the evidence of its size and mass points to its gravity being not enough to justify how thick its atmosphere is. There are plenty of bigger objects in the solar system that don't even have as thick an atmosphere or any atmosphere for that matter. So why does Titan, this little moon, have such a thick atmosphere? Well, the only explanation or the best explanation that we could think of is geologic activity. This is really, really important, and it's going to become more important as we move on in the lecture. And because it's so important, this is a very significant claim that we're making when we say the atmosphere can only be present as it is on Titan because it is geologically active. So what 
supports this claim? Well, for one, the methane in the atmosphere, the presence of so much methane, well, 5%, you might not think sounds like a lot, but for the whole atmosphere and for it being the other main constituent other than nitrogen in Titan's atmosphere, it is significant amount of methane. So why is there so much methane? Because technically methane gets broken down by solar radiation over time and only lasts in the atmosphere on a time scale of tens of millions of years. So clearly whatever released the methane or whatever was the source of methane to Titan's atmosphere to begin with couldn't have happened billions of years ago. It had to either have happened tens of millions of years ago or even less, or it started billions of years ago and it's still seeping out methane because it's geologically active. So whatever activity is the source of methane in Titan's atmosphere is really important. We're not sure how recent it is, but it has to be relatively recent for the methane to still be present and not broken down in Titan's atmosphere. So this is really supportive evidence for geologic activity on Titan, but there's also argon evidence. So argon-40 is an isotope of argon, obviously, that has 18 protons and 22 neutrons. That doesn't matter so much, but what matters here is that the way argon-40 forms is by the decay, the radioactive decay of potassium-40 isotopes. So potassium-40 is an isotope of potassium, obviously, and potassium itself likes to be in solid state. And so the potassium on Titan is tied up in the rocks in the moon's interior, whereas the argon, which likes to be in the gas phase, has been identified by the Huygens probe in 2005 in the atmosphere. This argon-40 presence in the atmosphere is evidence, really good evidence, for geologic activity on Titan because in order for the potassium decayed argon-40 isotopes to escape from the interior of Titan to its atmosphere, there had to be some sort of geologic or volcanic or tectonic or some sort of activity to bring it out from the interior and up to the surface. So these lines of evidence for geologic activity on Titan are really, really important. There are more lines of evidence, but the main two or really, really supportive two are argon and methane present in the atmosphere. So before we get into how the geologic activity might be occurring, whether it's tectonic activity, volcanism, or impact induced, let's talk a little bit about Titan's ocean. And so we did say that Titan may contain weird life at its surface within the methane lakes, and this would be more methane-based life rather than water-based life, but the water based life that we know, which is easier for us to predict and understand because we obviously know it, would be present in the underlying liquid water ocean that is beneath the icy surface of Titan. So let's talk a little bit about why we know this ocean is there and then whether there might be life there. So like Europa, Titan undergoes tidal stress due to Saturn's immense gravitational pull on Titan as it orbits around Saturn. So just like when we talked about in the Europa geologic activity video. I'll link it up here if you want to check it out. We talked about how Europa orbits around Jupiter, and as it does so, it's expanded and contracted because of tidal stress, or basically the gravitational pull of Jupiter on Europa. And the same thing happens to our moon as well as our Earth because of their gravitational pulls to each other. And this causes tides. That's why it's called tidal stress. And the same thing happens to Titan. As it orbits around Saturn, Saturn's gravity affects and pulls on Titan and deforms it. And so Titan's tidal stress allows it to have enough tidal heating and energy to have a liquid ocean under its icy surface, aka it allows it not to be just a dead, icy, cold, frozen moon. So it has a liquid ocean because of this tidal stress. And we know this because of the degree of bulging that Titan undergoes when it orbits around Saturn. We can measure this and therefore we can measure the liquid ocean as well as its rough size. So we get an estimate based on not only the degree of bulging, but also other physics-y stuff that I'm not going to get into, but we get a measurement for both the ice shell thickness as well as the ocean thickness because of this data. And it suggests that the ice shell is around less than or equal to 100 kilometers thick, and the ocean is about 70 to 100 kilometers thick. Moreover, magnetic field data suggests that the ocean is salty, just like Europa's ocean. So could life be present in Titan's ocean? Well, it depends. And, you know, what more could you want from a scientist than the answer it depends. So that would depend
depend on energy. And why is energy important? Well, that was one of the three major essentials for life that we talked about in the first slide. Energy, the Chinops elements, and water. Energy is required for life because life needs to grow, reproduce, and just generally live or maintain its cells. And so we have to gain energy to be able to do this and just function. And to get energy, we have to use either chemical reactions or photochemical reactions. On Earth, there's photosynthesis and there's chemosynthesis. And then there's things like us or heterotrophs that eat the things that do those energy creating processes. And we sustain ourselves using this kind of energy. However, the availability of the compounds needed for the chemical reactions that life does to create its energy could be a limiting factor for life on other worlds, such as what we talked about in Europa. And we talked a little bit more about the thermodynamics about this energy that life needs, as well as the metabolisms that are possible in that first Europa video. And we won't go into that here, but this is also a limiting factor for life on Titan. So what is the one thing that could occur on Titan to allow life to gain those compounds to make energy? Geologic activity. This is the key for life on Titan. And not just Titan, guys. As we talked about in the Geologic Activity Europa video, it's also pretty key for life on Europa. And obviously, if geologic activity is occurring on these worlds, it doesn't automatically mean they have life, but it makes it way more possible. So how might geologic activity be occurring on Titan? Well, this could occur in a few different ways. Tectonics, cryovolcanism, or volcanism with the underlying water magma that's on Titan, and impacts. So let's talk about tectonics first. Recall that argon-40, the isotope of argon found in Titan's atmosphere, is evidence for geologic activity on Titan because it would have had to have gotten there from Titan's interior. This could be evidence for tectonics on Titan. However, there are some doubts about whether tectonic activity is possible on Titan, and this is because of ice versus water buoyancy. So ice is much more buoyant than water. It's less dense than water. So it would float, right? Well, yes, yeah, so that presents a problem. How would subduction occur if there's not going to be any, like, on Earth there's slab pull. Once subduction starts to occur, that dense and cold oceanic slab that's subducting underneath the continental or other oceanic slab on Earth, it gets pulled down into the mantle, the magmatic mantle, and convex and just kind of recycles itself back into the mantle. But on worlds where there is water and ice dynamics, the density is such that ice would not want to subduct. It'd be pretty difficult unless there was compositional differences among the ice on the surface that would create density differences. For example, we talked about the possibility on Europa of differential salt content in the ice that would create quote-unquote plates for plate tectonics where some would be denser because they have more salt and some would be less dense and therefore create the possibility of subduction on Europa. But for Titan, we haven't necessarily observed differential salt content in the surface ice of Titan. And even if there is, it'd still be pretty difficult for subduction to occur. But the buoyancy problem is actually reduced quite a bit by the presence of composition positional variation in the water. So when we're thinking about the density of ice versus water, we should also consider the water. And because of the abundance of ammonia in Titan's ocean, this decreases the water's density and increases its buoyancy relative to the ice. And so this could cause the ice, if forced, to subduct. But it also could present the possibility of ammonia water cryomagma that can be forced up through kind of volcano-like things on Titan. So let's talk about cryovolcanism. Cryovolcanism is a little bit more promising of a possibility on Titan from our data so far, and the buoyancy issue is still there, but with the ammonia present in the water making it less dense, as well as the possibility of gas bubbles of hydrogen or methane in the water magma that might drive eruptions up volcanoes just like gas bubbles in magma does on Earth. So we talk about how gas in 
magma on Earth drives volcanic eruptions in the silicate magmas video. If you want to check it out, I'll link it up here. But we don't have to fully speculate when it comes to cryovolcanism on Titan. Why? Well, because there are actually features on Titan that support evidence for cryovolcanism. These are volcanic like craters at the polar regions of Titan. The fact that they're in the polar regions is most likely because it's warmer and the ice is thinner at poles of Titan. And this volcanism that created these craters on Titan is potentially still occurring because some of the craters appear new. Now, this is not fully understood evidence, but it is possible that these present new craters that are recent and currently active volcanoes. And then also the volcanic features are found near lakes of methane, which indicates that they may be powered by volatiles like methane or nitrogen. But moving to our third and last way that geologic activity could be occurring, or at least cycling of materials could be occurring on Titan, that is impacts. Is it possible that impacts could provide the necessary cycling of material on Titan? And if so, how? Well, when comets or asteroids impact Titan, they melt or vaporize some of the material just like they would on Earth or any planetary body. So upon the recrystallization or refreezing in Titan's case of the material that they have melted or vaporized, chemical reactions might occur where they create new compounds that are energetically useful for life. And these chemical reactions might occur during the time that the impact is still superheating the area, causing the energy necessary to create these types of energetically useful compounds. So this could be a possible mechanism of providing the compounds needed for life to create its energy to sustain itself, reproduce itself, and grow. But this will require either an immense amount of these compounds created upon each impact or an immense amount of impacts that continue to occur often enough to sustain the life that is on Titan. So that is it for this Titan video. The major reference I'm using to make this video is a book called Alien Oceans. I don't actually have it on me to show you because I have the audiobook. It is a physical book as well if you want to get that. And I'll link it in my description if you want to check it out. It's by Kevin Peter Hand. He's an amazing astrobiologist and I just fangirl over him all the time. Also, he reads his own audiobook, which is awesome because he not only pronounces everything right, but also puts emphasis on the right things. And then I'm also using this book called Saturn's Moon Titan from 4.5 billion years ago to present. Now, if you guys want me to do more videos on Titan, because clearly I didn't talk about all the 4.5 billion year history that Titan has gone through, I can do that uh, using information in this book as well as other sources. So let me know if you enjoyed this video about Titan and want more Titan content in this astrobiology playlist. But in terms of what I have coming up so far, I have the Europa Geologic History and Europa ocean chemistry videos coming up next in this playlist, but I can add other moon and other planet videos. So just let me know what you guys want to see. But anyway, thanks again for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.